Yo, what is up everybody? I am Legend with Ditto Music and today we're talking about how to record vocals from home, plugins to technique so that you can make release ready songs that you can be proud of. And speaking of release ready, you probably want to release this song. So be sure to check out Ditto Music's 30 day free trial linked down below where you can distribute as many songs as you want. You can keep 100% of the royalties. Your music goes on streaming platforms all over the world. And you can also add publishing to your release. And before we move on with today's video, we're gonna be giving away one Shure MV7 microphone to one of you out there. For your chance to win, all you have to do is be subscribed to this YouTube channel, so hit that subscribe button, and also leave a comment down below telling us what you do to record your vocals at home. From there, we'll be picking one of you guys to win this epic microphone that was inspired by the epic design of the Shure SM7B. This one bringing a more modern take with not only an XLR connector, but a USB one as well. And without further ado, let's move on to the video. So the first thing that you're gonna want to do is create the ideal recording environment. What that entails is everything from how far you are from the microphone, the kind of equipment that is hooked up to your microphone, and any kind of sound treatments that you have on the walls, on the ceiling, things like that. For me, I personally like to position the mic around six to 12 inches away from my face, not too far because you don't want an echo bouncing off the walls, but you also don't want it too close to where your recording sounds a little bit like muffled a little bit muffled. Essentially, the closer you are to your microphone, the warmer the tone is going to be. It's gonna pick up a lot more of that low end of your voice. You kind of want to avoid that. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to do some post-processing to boost down the low end of that vocal. Some tools that you wanna buy for your microphone are going to be a pop filter, which is going to block any of those hard plosives like the Bs and P sounds that get into your microphone. It's not gonna distort your audio. If you don't have access to a pop filter, a unique way around this would be to hold a pen or a pencil or even your finger in front of your face and you can sing like this and this will kind of deaden that harsh B and P plosive sound. Some other things that's gonna help focus the direction of your sound are going to be a reflection filter or the Chaotica eyeball. These things are going to help you isolate your vocals so that they're not bouncing off the walls of your room in your studio. If you have the budget or the material to do so, you wanna make sure that you deaden the sound in your space. That is to put up your sound panels, your foam blocks from Amazon, whatever it is that you're gonna to do to treat your room. Keep in mind, you don't have to start out with all this crazy equipment and sound panels and acoustic walls that you're you know, putting everywhere. When I started recording vocals at home, I literally used my closet space to isolate my vocals because there's tons of clothes in there. I had a carpet on the floor. So basically I had my own vocal booth. As long as you have carpet underneath you and some clothes around you, some curtains, something around you that's not just a solid wall, you should be okay to record. The next thing that you wanna do is gain stage. Gain staging is when you basically set the gain of your tracks to a lower level so that when you do record, you have some headroom for mixing and mastering and things like that. An example of this would be my tenor tracks here. So I have them all set at negative 15 dB. And that way, when I start recording, I have some headroom to kind of turn the, the volume of the track up as long as my microphone level is okay. Next up, aside from recording a typical lead vocal that every song pretty much has, you wanna enhance your song with things like dubs and backing vocals or ad-libs. But there are a few tricks that you can use to kind of enhance the feeling of these ad-libs and dubs, and also some plugins that you can add to make them sound even more dynamic and play their role in the background. So here is a section of my new song, Glow, that has a dub that I recorded to kind of enhance the transition from the verse into the chorus. We have a little bit of build coming from one single lead vocal to two dubs, and then eventually the chorus, which is this big, you know, orchestration of sound. <laughs> Here I just did an octave stack, which is me singing the same note, but an octave higher. It's like a soprano voice. I only did that one vocal dub, but as you can see and hear, it's going to give me that forward motion that I'm really looking for. I'm trying to get you on my team because you know I know got to kiss the show. Oh, I'm trying to get you on my team because you know I know got to kiss the show. Oh. 
Now we can take this a step further and even add another plugin that's going to help spread our vocal to have an even wider sound. This is something that I really like to do with my dubs and with my stacks of harmonies. I went with Avox Duo by Antares and I applied these to both of my dubs so that basically we're getting kind of a really wide sound but we're not recording multiple voices to achieve this. It's kind of a simpler way to do it and I can also control the volume of my doubles within the plugin itself. If you're someone who has the time and the effort and you want to go ahead and get a more natural sound for your songs, I would recommend recording individual dubs for your songs. I went ahead and did that here. Normally in this case, I would record four vocal stacks, but I didn't want it to sound super huge. So I recorded just two per part. We have our vocal lead here. We have our soprano stacks here, and we have our alto stacks here. So this is going to be a three part harmony that I've recorded, two vocals recorded per part. So six unique recordings. And the fact that they're unique is the most important part of this method. You can't just copy and paste your vocal and expect it to sound like it's something dynamic. You're not doing it the right way. The reason why this method works is because you need to have those subtle nuances that are different in each of your recordings. You can't get that if you copy and paste the exact same recording, and I'll show you. So here is one stack. Now what I did here is I recorded two separate vocals, and then I panned one 100% to the left, and the other one I panned 100% to the right. Basically what that means is one vocal is only going to be heard from the left ear and the other vocal is only going to be heard from the right ear. So this kind of creates a sense of a choir or multiple voices because one unique vocal is here, one unique vocal is here. And when you have these two unique vocals singing, it's almost like you're creating a surround sound effect within your DAW. <laughs> You can't replicate that digitally. You can't. You can get close, but you can't replicate actual recordings. Another thing that you can do with your background vocals, your dubs, your vocal stacks is to process the frequencies differently than you would on your leads to differentiate them from your lead vocals as well. This could be anything from a low pass filter, a high pass filter, distorting your stacked vocals over your lead, stuff that's going to kind of make it sound different. In this case, on the rap of my song, I have a dub at the end of the rap that I want to emphasize. And that's another way that you can use vocal dubs is to emphasize a certain line in a song. The vocal itself is very bright, very harsh, very in your face. And I wanted the dub to be kind of more muted and kind of toned down, but still kind of serving its purpose of having that higher note play. Here's the original vocal. Over. See the boy cop in the condo, millions from a band of oil. And here is the vocal dub sang at a higher octave, but I did a low pass filter to give it a different tone from the lead. City boy copping the condo, millions from a bando. City boy copping the condo, millions from a bando. And just like the sun, I shine on the glow, get in and finally, as you're going throughout this recording process, when you get to the end and you're ready to mix everything, you wanna make sure that you have the right vocal chain, or at least a general idea of how a vocal chain should be set up. So here is how you'll want to lay everything out. For me, generally at the top of my vocal chains, I like to have all the plugins that are going to be cleaning up the audio of my vocal track. And that's everything from regulating the pitch to my changes and fluctuations in volume, to the frequencies that are heard in my voice or in the microphone that I'm using. And then of course, adding the character to that vocal to kind of make it shine and sound different in other parts of the song. With that said, I usually put my autotune at the very top of my vocal chain, even before my noise gate and other things, because I want it to be at the root of where my notes are being sung. Next, you wanna EQ your vocal. So you wanna have the EQ right below that. This gives you the most control of your vocals instead of having it kind of appear later on in the chain where all these other plugins are going to be affecting and influencing the sound. You wanna have it more so at the top so that you can craft your vocal in the way that you want it to sound. Now next up, after your EQ or your cleaning plugins, like your noise gates and things like that, you wanna go ahead and throw on your compressor. In this case, I'm using the classic CLA-2A compressor with a little bit of compression. The compressor kind of elevates the lowest 
heard parts of your vocal and squashes down the highest or most heard parts of your vocal so that everything is kind of within the same normalized range. So I'll show you what this sounds like without the compressor and you can sort of get a feel of what it actually does to your vocal. And if you feeling right, they put your hands in the air, you already know that we gonna And if you feel it right, they put your hands in the air, you already know that we gonna go. You can also use compressors on a rap vocal or any other vocal that you want to intensify. Uh, that is like make all the breaths heard or your plosives sound a lot punchier. Everything is just kind of more in your face, gritty even sometimes or distorted. So here's a case for exactly that. Now I used the driver plugin by Native Instruments. So in this case, I'm using the CLA to a compressor to squash the vocal essentially and get it all within that range. But then I have the driver uh, plugin to kind of give me a little bit more grit and, and harshness. Yeah, wherever the sun or the moon go know that we glow. Thinking I should up and move to Ontario. Yeah, wherever the sun or the moon gon' know that we glow. Thinking I should up and move to Ontario. Now, lastly, I can't look at this example without checking out our reverbs and our delays because that plays a heavy role in a lot of songs. Every song, I would like to say. And this is one of the last things that I add to my chain because it really fills in the empty blank spaces that are left in your song. Between the lines and the lyrics where there's nothing being said, these are all parts that can be filled in with something or left intentionally empty. But when you want to fill these things in, you can use a reverb or a delay. Yeah, wherever the sun or the moon gon' know that we glow. Thinking I should up and move to Ontario. Maybe even So you notice how there is just empty space there that could be occupied by something. And so that's where our delay and our reverb comes into play, but mostly the delay in this case. So we put a quarter note delay. So every quarter note is going to be me repeating basically what I say in the original recording. And it's going to fill in these little tiny, tiny blank spaces that you can see in between the lines. Yeah, wherever the sun or the moon go know that we glow. Thinking I should up and move to Ontario. Maybe Vancouver's the move, it's really true though. You can take a look at my vocal chain on the right hand side just to get a general idea of how I laid this particular vocal out. Now, there is no right or wrong way to lay out a vocal chain as long as you get the sound that you're looking for. Um, there are definitely ways that are more efficient and better than others, and that's why we teach these videos. However, I encourage you guys to kind of go in your DAW and just play around with the order of your plugins because this is how you're going to learn yourself and also how you'll find your own sound and your own way to process vocals. So don't be afraid to go ahead and make mistakes and try new things. But otherwise, this has been How to Record Vocals at Home. If you found this video to be helpful, drop a like, leave a comment if you have any questions or comments about today's topic, and also subscribe and hit that bell for notifications on the next video that gets released. And with that being said, I guess I'm out for the day, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay legendary.